In this series of videos, I'm going to provide a quick overview of the basics of ERP methodology so you can see the big picture. The first video will cover the basics of the EEG. To record the EEG, we put a set of electrodes in the subject's head. In most labs, the electrodes are embedded in a cap. The electrodes don't directly contact the skin. Instead, we squirt in a conductive gel that makes contact between the skin and the metal electrode pellet. But don't worry, that's a blunt tip syringe, not a sharp needle. We don't inject anything into the skin. After we squirt in the gel, we connect each electrode to an amplifier, which then feeds into a computer so we can see the EEG on the screen and record it to the computer's hard drive. Here we're looking at a 5 second period of EEG, starting 50 seconds into the recording. We get a separate signal at each electrode site. The x-axis is time. Here it's shown in seconds, but we often use milliseconds. There are a thousand milliseconds in one second. The y-axis is a voltage, usually expressed in microvolts, where one microvolt is one millionth of a volt. Notice the oscillations at these electrode sites here. If you counted, you'd find about 10 peaks in a one second period. That means it's a 10 Hz oscillation. Oscillations around 10 Hz are really common in EEG recordings. They were actually the first feature of the EEG that Hans Berger documented back in the 1920s. He called them alpha band oscillations. Over time, researchers discovered that the EEG contains oscillations in several different frequency bands, which are known as the alpha, beta, gamma, theta, and delta bands. You mainly see delta band oscillations when someone is asleep. In fact, these are the slow waves that give slow wave sleep its name. Theta band oscillations are prominent in microelectrode recordings from the hippocampus in animals, but you can't see hippocampal theta on the scalp. However, you can see theta band oscillations that are generated in neocortical areas, such as the prefrontal cortex. Alpha band oscillations are mainly seen over visual cortex when the subject is awake but zoned out, focusing on their own internal thoughts rather than on an external task. Most of the ERP experiments in my lab are pretty boring, so we see a lot of alpha. Alpha band oscillations are usually thought to reflect corticothalamic feedback loops. Beta band oscillations typically occur when someone is mentally active, often when there's very little alpha. The beta band oscillations tend to be much smaller and less regular than the alpha band oscillations. At the upper end, we see gamma band oscillations. They occur so rapidly that they presumably reflect short-range feedback loops within a cortical column. Gamma band oscillations tend to be quite small, and they can be difficult to distinguish from muscle artifacts in scalp recordings. I'd like to caution you that this is just a coarse way of subdividing the EEG. You don't want to assume that the theta band activity you see in one experimental paradigm represents the same underlying neurocognitive processes as the theta band activity you see in a very different paradigm. However, these five frequency bands, delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma, have proven to be a useful first approximation for dividing up the oscillations in the EEG.